Food and weight obsession can be exhausting. Losing weight, gaining weight, dieting, feeling like a failure because you missed a workout, binged, overate, or gained all the weight back. The cycle is endless and it can be maddening, but I'm here to say you can stop the mental madness. You can take back control of your food behaviors, but you have to face your fears, you have to ask for help, and make a change. I am Leslie M. Thornton, permanent weight loss coach from hpwl.co. This is Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss, and I know you can make this happen. On this podcast, you will hear how to stop the mental madness, love your body, trust your food decisions, so you can create a life of happiness, freedom, and inner peace. Hello, hello, Leslie M. Thornton, Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss. Today we have Imogen Courtney all the way from Australia here to talk (laughs) about her Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss program. I'm so excited to have you guys get to speak with her as your journey, Imogen, was so amazing, to be honest, because you already had done a lot of personal development from what I can tell and had a high level of self-awareness, right? You're an entrepreneur, you kind of knew the things and had been through lots of different programs. And yet it seemed like it all really came together and gave you the freedom that we guarantee our clients. So Mm -hmm. we'd love to hear for all of our personal development junkies and all the things, just what your experience was like, if maybe you wouldn't mind starting from, you know, what was your relationship with food, body and weight? Um, in your life leading up to this program? So um, basically what kind of led me to the program was I was sort of at a point in my life where I had done, like you said, like a lot of work on myself, a lot of um, emotional um, self-development and that sort of thing. And the next sort of thing for me to unlock was my health and my my physical body. And I, so I, ha- I had like all these um, tests done, like my stools, my bloods, all of that. And there was a few things that came back. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of SIBO, but it's quite like a pesky thing to get rid of it's like a it's like a gut um bacteria of the bad bacteria overgrowth and yeah so that kind of embarked me on to this health journey of healing my gut and to me I think subconsciously part of me was like yep I'm ready to heal my internal world and heal my gut but like also part of me really wanted to like lose weight and be the the best looking of that I was, you know, up until this point. So there was kind of pause for a second, because I'm really grateful that you said that because Mm. I myself also, you know, when looking at it's like I bought courses on gut health and, Mm. you know, all the biome being in balance and, you know, taking probiotics and like certain regimes and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's really important because a lot of times our brains will be like, no, like I'm doing it for health reasons, Mm -hmm. but at what point do we need to take a little bit closer look at that and be like, is this actually part of my food, body, weight, looking good obsession? Mm -hmm. Because I'm a self-diagnosed orthorexic where you know absolutely everything going on with your body and how all the cells work and how this food processes and these, you know what I mean? And that Mm. I had to be really honest about that. And I would say that I see that like people who are very anxious or um, even like, I don't know, like maybe hypochondriacs or you know, this type of energy will like go full throttle into the gut. Bi- and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it when done well, right? But it's again, for anyone listening, like just being honest with yourself and careful. Like, is this another obsession where I'm trying to be a perfectionist and get my body to be perfect so mm. that I don't have to be scared about dying or getting a disease? These are other fears going on in the psyche as well um, versus yeah having more of that balance so thank you for sharing that Mm. honestly I think it's helpful no worries and exactly like you said I think for me being really honest with myself and like I 
I, I still am very interested and fascinated by gut health. And I think it's really important for, you know, everyone um, to be, have some awareness of gut health because it, it, yes, it rules agree. everything. And um, yeah, I still, th- that's still a part of who I am and my interests and like what I believe in, but which I'll, I'll get to later. But for me, it was the, where where is that coming from? Like, yes, I have these, beliefs um of gut health and you know um that sort of thing but is this coming from a place of like fear of you know not looking my best or or you know that that sort of thing or is it coming from like a genuine like really want to just work on my health no matter how I look no matter my appearance I just really want to get my health right and I think there, it was kind of like both both voices in my ear through that um so anyway leading into the the protocol that I eventually went on it was it was quite an intense very challenging uh protocol and it there was a lot of restriction involved because just because for this moment in time um the way that SIBO works it feeds on a lot of um like sugars and carb, carbs and, and that sort of thing so for this portion of my life in this protocol in the scheme of things it seems quite small um to be restricting this much but the the implications of that was that my restrictive mindset was just you know in overdrive and when I was on the other end of the protocol and starting to like reintroduce foods and you know allow these new foods to come in I was just like I, I just felt like I'd lost all of my control and that I couldn't trust myself around these certain foods that I needed to, I needed to bring back in because it's part of the process. You don't want to like restrict all of these food groups for, for too long because it can actually have, um, you know, a damaging effect on your gut. But I just felt like so much lack of control around these foods and just very anxious. Um, and yeah, I think it, it had, a big toll on my my mental health um I was able to from this protocol you know there was definitely so many positives Mm -hmm. um but yeah afterwards if I could ask a question so the anxiety that you're feeling do you know what that was about after it came off so I I think it was just sort of like when when I was allowing myself to have these foods and welcoming them welcoming them in I started to get like these binge urges again and for that whole nine months that I was on this protocol I was like I haven't binged once I haven't like emotionally ate once or over ate eaten anything and my my habit must be broken then like I must have broken that habit and we're all good We've, we haven't done it for this amount of time so that just must mean that the habit's gone but little did I know that it's not a matter of breaking habits it's a matter of like emotion your emotions and not feeling your emotions and that's what I learned basically all in your program um so then you know these emotions were still sort of coming up but now I had free reign on all these different foods so that's where my body kind of went into that default mode again to self-soothe with food um and I just I just thought that I was I was a failure and so many people were Mm -hmm. congratulating me on like, wow, like you've done this amazing protocol. Like you must be so proud of yourself. Like I couldn't do that. You're amazing. And I just like had this feeling of just like emptiness. Like I couldn't receive any of those compliments or encouragement or support because I, I felt like a failure. I was like, but I have gained weight. I have, you know, binged on foods now and, you know, like what, what have I achieved after, yeah, after all this time, like what have I achieved? Like that's my mind going into perfection mode and like not seeing all the hard work I've put in Mm -hmm. um, and not accepting people's encouragement and just focusing on me slipping back into these, these patterns. Um, But I think, I think this all happened in divine timing because it was sort of like this almost like this final push in this final moment where I was like I am so sick and tired of this I'm so 
just like, I just want to be free. I've worked so hard. I've invested so much money. I just want to be free. And, you know, so I, I, I went back to my, my other, other way of like self-soothing through podcasts. I was like, okay, I'd heard a little bit about hypnosis um, and just like uh, that, that sort of world as well. And I was like, oh, I wonder if this could really help me. I wonder if it's more of like a subconscious mind thing because I've tried everything. I've used all the tools in my tool belt. What am I kind of missing here? And for me, that was, yeah, like the, the unconscious mind. So went on to um apple Podcasts. i was like all right what have we got let's try something like hypnosis for eating or like you know just to because i really wanted some relief on just you know having a better relationship with food and then i flicked through a few and then your podcast popped up and i was like that sounds interesting let's, let's have a little dabble mm-hmm. and yeah just from like the first few podcasts i listened to i was like wow thank you universe you have pointed me in the right direction like straight to here and yeah then just you know embarked on that that pathway and it has just been so freeing to me so I I truly believe that you know I had to go through this whole journey of like you know this this health protocol so I, I fixed my sorry I shouldn't I shouldn't use the word fixed I I healed my internal body and my physical body um but that just kind of unveiled to me that there was still a, like I've healed that part of me now there's kind of this emotional part that is still desperately needing love and attention and compassion so I'm grateful. I'm so grateful for the the journey that I've been on in the last few months, even though it's been pretty rocky and challenging, but it's led me to you and it's led me to like freedom. So yeah, it's been a beautiful, beautiful process going through all of this. I love that you can Mm. see, you know, the entire thing and how all of it has led there together. Cause it's so easy, obviously as dieters to just be like, did that was successful. That thought that that was the thing failed at it that didn't work right and like Mm. continue that path and get so jaded versus like you're saying seeing like oh my god I got this amazing thing from that and I learned this and that got me through this part of my life that was challenging and right it's just like what if you saw all of those things you tried in the past as how dedicated you are to your health to your happiness to your well-being investing in yourself all the different things but we can see based on however the past has unfolded that the probable almost certain future is you'll do another thing and then immediately say, Oh, you know, I sucked at that and da da da. And it's like, so okay, so let's work on the mindset aspect of not thinking you sucked at it and pay attention to how and increase the faith that everything on your path is happening for you to unfold to the next thing and the next thing and the next yes. thing. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. It's just brilliant to see you like aware of that, you know, cause I know not everybody is. And I think you also said, you know, a lot of times people come to us when they are, um, just came off something very restrictive and then, you know, either they are slowly gaining the weight back and it's terrifying or all the weight already did come back. Um, and yeah, there's a client that's working with us right now who she had actually never dieted before and then, but had like a weight issue. Then she went on a diet. She finally had some success, but then realized as soon as she got off it, she was like, I'm binging more now. Right. And that was my ex- experience as well, you know? And I, th- I was just walking through a store the other day. And I remember when I was following that super strict program that I did, no sugar, no flour, all the things that they said when you're when you take all of this stuff out when you go and shop you are not going to want any of the sweets like you were saying you know you're on your gut protocol and you're like oh my Mm. god like it's true like I don't even (laughs) want it anymore and that's what happened to me too and it was like this is the cure like I'm never gonna want that stuff ever again until right? We come off it and then all of a sudden you introduce some of it. And then all of a sudden it's like, so that's like, and what I want anybody listening to understand is like the protocol, the diet, the thing that is numbing you from feeling the feelings that Imogen and I are talking about, about like, I'm a failure, like all the shitty self-talk that's happening in the background all the time. Um, 
And once we heal that, then your life just changes for everything as you continue on your growth path. Um, yeah. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I fully agree. And like, for me, I thought that I was a pretty emotional person. Like I thought I could cry well <laughs> and mm -hmm. feel my emotions pretty well, but this program has just completely unveiled and unlocked the reality that like I haven't been properly processing or feeling like fully feeling and embodying my emotions for for so long like it, like as far back as when I was you know a little kid and you know just not had the space to feel feel my emotions and I think yeah that inevitably from, from I didn't see it back then and I, I probably didn't even see it in uh, like a few years ago and like I saw it in this program that oh okay well I actually was numbing out or self-soothing with food and distracting that like mental chatter that comes through the more you continue to eat the food and you're in that because I just thought I would zone out and it would just happen because I I thought I'd created this habit by restricting to, you know, because I, I didn't have the best body image growing up and, you know, I wanted to try and look skinnier or look slimmer and I would try and restrict what I ate and then would obviously be starving by the time I got home from school. So I'd eat all this food and I thought I just created this habit. And you know what, maybe to begin with, that's what it was. I created this you know, toxic relationship with myself and food and created that habit. But the more, like the older I got, I think I definitely used food to just self-soothe. And when negative emotions came up, it would just be that unconscious thing of just go straight to that without me even really understanding what was going on. But yeah, going through this program, I could have that awareness of seeing, okay, something might have happened earlier in the day that kind of stressed me out or a tough conversation that I had with a partner or something happened um, something that I saw that maybe triggered me in some way and I'd just be kind of like dealing with that throughout the day and then it would like the binge or the urge to binge would happen at the end of the night and I, I wouldn't be able to make that connection initially I'll be like why is this happening like I feel fine like I'm fine in the moment but then it's actually, if I looked back in my day, which this program was really helpful in just having awareness of like the things that happened throughout the day and throughout the week, I can actually pinpoint that that moment, in that moment when I may have felt triggered or stressed, I wasn't maybe in a space to be able to process that emotion or feel it or, you know, allow those negative emotions to come up and I just kind of pushed it away so I could get on with my day if I was working or something but then when I'm at home in kind of like a safe space then that emotion is kind of in the background and it's like okay I'm ready to be felt now hello but then yes. kind of you know didn't have the tools initially to uh, al allow that emotion to come through and be seen and heard and felt so it would just turn to food because that would just give me some distraction or you know a moment of peace in a way um but yeah now that I have all these tools it's so amazing to be able to just be like okay I have that awareness what's happened in my day let's pull one of the tools out and let's have some sense of relief and you know nine times out of ten probably ten times out of ten to be honest i will do that, do the emotional mastery tool. And then that feeling of, you know, overeating or emotional eating will just, just pass. Oh my God. You just described yeah. it so beautifully. I really appreciate that. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And what Imogen is pointing to is like, without this awareness of looking at, you know, where this might've come from when you're stuck in the, like, I'm a failure, black and white thinking what's wrong with me, like all the negative self-talk we can't even begin to look at that because that's not the reality you live in versus like every experience that you have is a new experience and there's something to learn from everything that happened. And it's like, okay, food is my greatest teacher because anytime that I'm eating out of alignment, mm. then I'm missing something. 
right? Yeah. Or maybe there's, right? And we can tell when we have that, it's like, oh my God, I really overdid it. Or I knew something like, but I, and it makes us feel awful, which is when the brain starts, but it's like, let's learn how to quiet the brain down and let's just look at it, give you what you need. And then now, and you can't unlearn what you learn. So once you realize like, oh, X, mm. Y, and Z is what caused me to do this. You remember that the next time. And it's like, you either do it and you're like, oh, I know why that's happening. That's fine. Or you're like, oh no, I've been here before. I'd rather not. And then you grow, um, mm. which is how we get into that growth mindset, which is amazing. Something mm. that I recently uh, came upon Imogen that I just shared with our clients that I think was amazing and hopefully continues to be amazing for you and everyone we're listening mm -hmm. to. I'm going to do a separate podcast on this too. I heard this girl who is being coached live um, through her food, body and weight stuff as well. And she had gained 20 pounds in two months and previously was anorexic and, you know, feeling all the pain because her pants were tighter and the scale is going up mm -hmm. and she can't stop eating and she's way overeating on foods and all the things. And she's like, I know my higher self knows that I can't go back, but anytime I step on the scale or I get this kind of feedback, my pants are too tight. My brain is immediately shaming me for mm -hmm all the things I'm doing wrong and that I, and having thoughts about, I should go back, which is something our clients experience a fair amount during the process. Cause it's very yes. scary. Yes. Yes. Happened to you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Got to stay strong. So something that she said that I thought was so profound was she was like, I have been living in a home, her home. She symbolized or identified as her body that has been built off self-hatred, shame, being critical of self. And all of that has been what my relationship with food, body, and weight has been my entire life. And when I'm scared, that's the only home that I'm familiar with. And so I keep wanting to go back. It's like being in an abusive relationship. It's like, why do we keep going back to that person, even though we know that they're terrible for us? And she was like, because I have no idea what a different home feels like in a home or a body that's built off self-love, forgiveness, faith that everything's happening for us, like ultimate, mm. just, you know, being able to whatever, be kind to yourself ultimately. And so it really just gave me something to say to, you know, our clients of like, this is what we're doing. You know, like you're choosing to leave a life and a home of abuse, negativity, criticism, you know, shame, and looking at that stuff because our whole life up to this point for anyone listening is about avoiding all of those feelings that are associated with all of that negativity. And so you're eating as a way to, but it's like, that's what's there. So it's like, we want you to make mistakes here. We want the overeating to happen. We want the pants, like not saying we want the pants to be tighter, but if they do get mm -hmm. tighter, we want to be with whatever's coming up and look at what are the shitty things you're saying to yourself? What are the painful mm -hmm. feelings? Because that is the gateway to learning with the tools, like you're saying, turning those thoughts around into self-loving forgiveness to yourself. Um, and yeah, just more positive emotions overall, which then leads us to want to be much more self-caring and being like, Oh, like now that I'm not shaming and guilting myself for eating a Kit Kat bar, like I'm just living my life. And now I would like to go and give my partner a hug or, you know, like mm. enjoy the day and go for a walk, which ends up being how people end up in a permanent weight loss situation where your weight stays the same. So yeah. I thought that was freaking amazing. Yeah, that's really, really beautiful. And I think I definitely relate to a lot of those elements. And I think as well, like the, the flow and effect of choosing this pathway and choosing to work on your emotional mastery the flow and effect that has obviously on yourself but on all your relationships with your partners your family your friends that sort of thing is is huge like I I honestly to be honest with you I I don't even know if I can think of a time when I like ever had self-love like I, I I think it's been so many years from when I was like in in primary school even where I just like 
I never thought I was pretty. I never thought that I was this or that. Like I just, there was always, it just kind of started of like not really thinking that I was ever good enough or anything too, too flash. But then as I got older, that kind of shifted to getting more harsh on myself and led to, you know, like very harmful, toxic behaviors towards myself and yeah just like it's just like a snowball effect and for for so many years I felt so trapped because I was like I I have all this like loud chatter in my mind that you know like we've spoken about it might not even be our voices but it's just so it's like a like you talk about as well like it's a mini prison and in your mind of just yeah self-hatred awful like talk to yourself and it's just like an ongoing cycle and it's so hard to get out of and for so long I was like I don't know I don't know how to get out of this and I can tell that it's affecting my relationships with other people because it's it's trying to come out but it's coming out in in other ways or like I'm snapping or getting triggered or something like that because it hasn't been felt because I don't know how to feel it and I'm scared to feel it. And there was so much fear when we were delving into the emotional mastery tools because I was so, so scared of what might come out of when I did feel a certain emotion. Um, yes. But, yeah, it, it's it's crazy when when you do actually get through that and move through that emotion and just allow it to finally be felt just the the clarity that comes from that afterwards and how how quickly you can reconnect with your partner or reconnect with yourself even so yeah it's just yeah all all I can describe of this program is just like given me so much freedom and relief Mm. Mm. I so appreciate that you just describe Mm. it so perfectly I just love it I'm sure everyone's mm. basking in the coolness of what you're saying. <laughs> so what would you say to anybody who is scared of feeling their feelings? Because I see that all the time of like, that's how I felt too. Yeah. Uh, I would say in reality, it is scary. Like, because sometimes it can be unpredictable what comes up, especially when you're doing um, like the, a belief turnaround or um like inner child work you know sometimes these these things that you didn't even know were there can come up and surface but just just believe in yourself and like trust that these emotions and feelings even those feelings of fear or feeling scared they're all there for a reason and for me you know this is just my experience I, I feel like fear of getting angry is quite common with women because it's kind of like, oh, I don't want to be aggressive or I don't want to come across. And we're just from from so young, we're always taught to like, you know, not be aggressive or not be too loud or don't be too this or too much. And we can kind of just become very quiet and small and not when anger or frustration or those big emotions, those big explosive emotions come up we're afraid of them because we don't want to maybe be perceived in a certain way. And then even if we're by ourselves, like it's that, it's that internalized shame or projection of other people's beliefs that we're like, Oh, I don't want to be seen like that. Even if it's just me in front of myself and yeah, but, but those emotions, like we're, we're human. We, we feel uh, so many different emotions there's so many emotions to be felt and that's part of the human experience so yes it may be scary but you know there's tools out there there's this program to help guide you through feeling those emotions in in a safe comfortable way and not feel like once you've felt them, they're just going to be there and you don't know what to do with it afterwards. There's actually some like, you know, integration into, okay, that emotion has come up, feel it. It's, it may be messy, chaotic, that's cool, but we're going to guide you safely back into um, processing in like a, a karma sort of state. So you can get in with your day and get on with your life. And I felt so, so supported doing this, these emotional mastery tools 
and just felt so held by everyone, all, all the other women in the program that, you know, are going through the same sort of thing and sharing their emotions so openly. And it's, it's so beautiful to see so many other people in a vulnerable state because it really just like gives you permission to feel that as well. And yeah, it's really, really, really helpful. And yeah, emotions are meant to be felt. So, right. Yeah. yeah and consider the, the fact that the bigger the binge is, the bigger the emotion that you're mm. trying to suppress just for people mm. listening. It's like, but it can go away quickly. I, I'm a food person, and I'm not saying I'm an expert on every food, but be able to talk to people who binge and even purge and say, the same thing that I do of like the reason you're doing that is because it helps the feeling of having that come out and that "Ah," that like vomit feeling is getting rid of your anxiety Mm. like I've never heard anybody else say that but I and it's and then I say to them like that's a very smart way to get yourself an emotional release Mm. you know and it's just Mm -hmm. like as soon as we can like stop because society is like binging is terrible purging and I'm not saying it's not bad and that it doesn't Mm -hmm sometimes kill people I'm not saying that Mm -hmm. but when it's someone who has an eating disorder who they're already stuck in shame negativity self-hatred pass fail right black and white thinking them hearing how terrible it is makes it worse they hide it better yes they binge more they isolate more so it's like let's talk about it and be like oh my god it's not that big of a deal and then I have people stop binging stop purging as a result and it's like because they're not scared of it anymore because if you keep Mm. making something terrible then it gets bigger and worse or whatever it's like it's fine Mm. okay yeah you're still here you're all right you know Mm. and let's look at it what led to Mm -hmm. it let's fix it and then they Mm. get to it like oh my god And like, there's, you know, I have a friend who has gone through, you know, programs for binging and whatever. And I'm not saying there's different levels of needs and like, Mm -hmm. you know, our program is not for every single person dealing with that, but certain people who are for sure. Um, And she like, they don't teach those things and I can Mm. see it. And like, it's that negative self-talk and that inner shamer and like, like are we supporting people with this emotional and mental aspect like this of like Mm. extracting out like you hate yourself and let's even question first where that got there and if that's even true and Mm. once you have that release and you change those thoughts and it's like again like you're saying you step into a new reality and it's like get to get on with your life (sighs) How do we tell more people? Um, yeah, like two podcasts a week, um, <laughs> and I love that you brought about the fact about how it impacts all of your life as well. Because whatever we are on the inside, we're going to attract on the outside. So if you still hate yourself, you're miserable, you're depressed, like then you're probably going to end up in some kind of codependent relationship where you're like, I need you to make me feel sane or to make me feel safe or to not binge at nighttime because I have company mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. Right? We end up just grabbing any person I know I have, you know, in the past and um it's going to they're gonna have mirror different things that we have as well and so it's like okay if you know having a better life if you know that you you know came here to whatever you want to create in your life and you know there's more and better and different and more aligned than and food is in the way then it's like consider that doing this work is how you get access to that to free up the mental space to doing that which by the way I know you have a business if you'd like to share about it totally <laughs> support of your being successful with it <laughs> yeah so I'm a I'm a hair and makeup artist so I originally built my business in Melbourne but I've more recently moved up to northern New South Wales in like close to Byron Bay and yeah it's it's doing it's doing amazing um and yeah I'm like slowly growing and growing which is great and like connecting with clients in the area and and surroundings. So for me, a big part of starting this program as well was to just free up space in my mind. Um, I think that was actually my, when I made my first video to the group, uh, just about like my intention for starting the program and things like that was 
I was just so tired of it taking up so much of my mind and my mental capacity because yes, I have a business. I, you know, have things going on in my life that I want to put my energy and attention to rather than just like having throughout the whole day, just nonstop. What am I eating next? How much have I eaten already today? you know, how, like, is this meal, like, what am I going to have for dinner? What am I having for lunch? You know, all of these things, it was just like constant, constant chatter. Um, and most of it was negative. And I just wanted to just feel like I had more space in my mind to put love and attention into my business. And, you know, when I do my admin days at home, just like be able to be concentrated and not have to, procrastinate so much and avoid avoid that and then just think about food and then just go down you know the food route and yeah so so that was a big one for me just allowing more more space in in my mind for my business and that it's honestly helped so much I I feel like the last month has been really productive for me and I've been able to you know put that attention into my business and my my admin and not have this like ongoing chatter in my mind all the time about about food (laughs) but some cleared out some space for some other topics in my mind (laughs) yeah right it's just like oh can we stop playing that track it gets so Uh, annoying and boring yeah wow (laughs) and just painful in general yeah for you and that was for me too it was like I cleared it out and I was like okay now I can focus on my business because Mm. I couldn't before (laughs) so Mm. it's just um yeah, huge for us continuing our path and reaching our goals. So congratulations. Thank and you. Really, we appreciate your time so much. You've been a delight mm-hmm. to coach <laughs> and hope this is just goodbye for now. Hopefully we'll see you again yeah. Yeah. anywhere else. See you on Facebook, putting out your videos on makeup, yeah. which I love watching. So thanks <laughs> for what you're doing. And thanks everyone for listening. If you're ready to get free from food, body, and weight, let Imogen's story inspire you. What would you say to them? I would say just, you know, honestly, you guys deserve this. If this has resonated with anyone, like any part of this story has resonated with you and you just feel like trapped or you don't, you feel like you don't know exactly where to go. Like, you know, you have this thing and maybe you don't have the space to talk about it. Or it's like, for me personally, I couldn't even verbalize it. Like it was really hard for me to tell my partner, even when it was like coming up, but I could not talk about it to a single soul because I was so ashamed and felt so lost with all of it and overwhelmed. But when I joined the program and had the support, it just like, it helped so much. So you will be so held and so supported in this program. And yeah, I just, you deserve it. Honestly, you guys deserve it. So invest in yourself and you'll thank yourself later. (laughs) Yes, that's so true. Awesome, Imogen. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for listening and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much. If you are serious about taking action on your struggle with food, body, and weight, then this is for you. Go ahead and text the word hypnosis to 855-BE-ALIVE. That's 855-232-232. 5483 immediately after texting that number you will get access to our free training that will tell you why you can't figure the food body and weight thing out why you can't keep weight off even after you've been successful in the past and how to actually overcome it including a mini hypnosis session at the end don't miss out text the word hypnosis to 855 be alive that's 855-232-5483